Today's video is how to set up an RC airplane from start to finish. So let's get started. Setting up an RC airplane can be as basic as binding to a receiver, then going to fly, or adding features such as rates, expo, flaps, gear, throttle cut, and other features. I have other videos on the channel that goes into a lot of this stuff in depth. However, I'm going to touch on those as we go through the setup but if you're wanting to do things like putting the rates on a different switch for the three control services refer to something like the dual rate and expo video first thing we need to do is bind to a receiver i've already got it bound up on this model however i'm going to create another model so we can start from scratch and also so i can show you some things to watch out for when you're adding more models into the radio First thing we need to do is hold down the model button. We're going to click new on the top right hand corner. Click new model at the top and then you have some options. Blank model, wizard, personal, and soar ETX. Blank model is going to be for just giving you a blank template. Wizard is if you want to use a setup wizard. Personal is when you've saved templates, they'll be in there. And soar ETX is some templates for some other options. So we're going to click on blank model. Now we push model on the right hand side. Push internal RF. And you can go ahead and label your model name if you want to. We're just going to go into internal RF. Change that to multi. Scroll up to DSM. And you'll notice that it says 21F. For the RF protocol. I would recommend changing that to auto so when you use different DSM receivers it will automatically set it for you. Subtype leave on normal. Enable max throw leave disable. That way your percentages in something like a bind and fly airplane with a spectrum receiver when it says 75% when you use 75% values it will be close to having the same movement that it should have recommended by the manufacturer. For that particular airplane. Servo update rate leave on 22 milliseconds. Low power mode leave disable. And disable channel map leave that disable. Disable channel map we'll go into a little bit more detail in just a moment when we look at the mixer so I can show you directly what I'm talking about with the channel mapping. The reason why you want to leave that off is because you set up the radio like normal. And it allows the spectrum receiver to output like normal. Channel range 1 through 12, and then receiver model number, bind, and range. So, when you're setting up the receiver, the reason why I want to create a new model is to show you what would happen if you try to use the re same receiver number. You'll notice that when I change this to 1, it says in use in model 01 that was the other model we started with you'll notice that the receiver immediately lit up when you bind a receiver and assign a receiver number in the radio it saves that receiver number so you could take multiple models and use the same receiver number and move that receiver between different planes and have control that's why the receiver lit up when we went to one also to keep a note when it says in red ID used in and a model name, that means it's currently being used in a model besides the one that you're on. So we want to change this to model two. You will notice that it says ID is unique and the light went out. So now we just need to put the receiver back in bind mode and go ahead and click the bind button and that will add a second receiver or it will reassign this to number two. We're just using the same receiver but that's how you would do it if you had this receiver in one plane and you're going to add a second receiver because you're putting in a new model with a different receiver. So I'll go ahead and put the receiver in bind mode now. Now we have the receiver flashing in bind mode. We just go ahead and click bind. You'll hear it beep. Receiver's flashing while it's initializing. Now you're bound to the receiver because you have the solid light. Lastly, take notice that the right box that said channel 12 lowered down to channel 8 once we bound to the receiver. Keep this in mind when you're binding to a DSM receiver 
it will lower that channel range number down. So get in the habit of changing that back to 12. That way, if you're using an 8 channel receiver or a 10 channel receiver, you can access those extra channels above channel 8. In this scenario, we're using an 8 channel and we wanted to set up AS3X and save, or we wanted to add a gain knob, those can use the two extra channels that are not physical channels, and we wouldn't be able to use them when we went into the setup. So just keep that in mind that it does lower it down from channel 12 to 8, and if you have a receiver or you're needing more channels to set up those other features, you need to raise that number back up to 12. Now let's push the return button on the top left. We'll go back to our model setup. Next part I would recommend doing is going to the output screen. This is the fourth icon over. The reason why I recommend going ahead and going to the output screen before you go any further, because sometimes this can be an easily missed step, and it's the one that's probably the most important on a maiden flight and a common issue I've seen happen, and that's having your control surfaces reversed especially when it's something as crucial as the ailerons you take off and you push the stick to the right the plane flips over to the left and then you have a crash or you damage your plane so that being said the first thing i do is go into this screen and invert the channels that we need to change let's say our aileron channel is backwards and we need to invert that one click on channel one Click edit, click inverted, and that works the proper way. And just so you can see it on the monitor on the top right hand corner, you will notice that the percentages are the same both ways right now. When I click invert, the top line will actually go the opposite way, correcting the direction of the ailerons. We'll back out of that screen. And then I would move to inputs. Inputs is where we add rates, which is the weight value, and expo. If you want to put this on different switches, all you'll need to do is when you go to the other control surfaces, change it to the switch that you want. If you want a little bit more in depth on how to do that, just check out my dual rates and expo video posted previously on the channel. We're going to go to aileron. We're going to copy. And then we're going to paste after. We're going to do that one more time. Copy. Paste after. Now we've got three lines. My top one, I'm going to make my high rate. We're going to leave the weight on 100%. Now if you measure your control surface or in the owner's manual, it tells you to use high rate of 80%. Just change the weight to 80%. Down here next to curve is where the expo is. I'm going to use 40%. Keep in mind, I'm not telling you to use these rates or weights and these expos. These are just values I'm using so you can see a difference when we toggle the switch. So we've got 100% weight with 40% expo. We want this to activate when the switch is in SG up. Now you can put this on whatever switch you want. If you want to use SD, SA, whichever one, just assign that switch now. And I'm going to use SG up. I go back to the previous menu. I'm going to click edit. I'm going to go to 85%. So 85% weight. I want the switch to be in the middle. SG is in the middle. And then expo, I'm going to use 30%. Back out to the main menu. I'm going to do this one last time. I'm going to click on the bottom line, click edit. We're going to change this to 70%. This switch needs to be SG down. And you'll notice every time I toggle the switch to the position, it automatically populates on the screen, and you just need to confirm by pushing the one that's highlighted. Expo, we're going to use 20%. Now we'll back up. We've got our triple weight set up for the aileron surface, which is SG up is 100% weight with 40% expo. SG in the middle is 85% with 30% expo. 
and SG down is 70% with 20% expo. You'll notice that when you toggle the switch, the one that's activated will actually highlight. Next, we can go into the mixer screen. It's the next icon over. And you'll notice that these input, mixer, and outputs actually go in order. So input, mixer, and then outputs. Channel 1, you'll notice it says aileron. Channel 2 is elevator. 3 is throttle. Channel 4 is rudder. When we're in the internal RF setting up the bind for a receiver, you'll notice that I mentioned something about channel mapping. And I'm going to keep this very simple. Channel mapping means that when it outputs to the receiver, it corrects the channel order so that the receiver is plugged in normal. So even though with most receivers, these are the channels that are the first four channels, with DSM, they're slightly different. For example, channel one in the mixer screen in most receivers is aileron. That's actually channel two on spectrum or DSM receivers. You will notice that we can still plug everything in normal because it's doing channel mapping. So even though that we set up ailerons on channel one here, you would still plug your aileron into channel two like normal. When you want to add things that are basic, such as a gear or throttle reverse and other features that just need a toggle of a switch, all you need to do is assign that switch as a source. I'm going to use something like a gear for channel 5. You hit the plus menu, add channel 5, click on the source, and just toggle the switch that you want. I'm using the back left, which is SF. You'll notice that the monitor, when I flip it, it goes from minus 100 to positive 100, which would work the gear. You don't have to put a name right there if you don't want to. I'm going to show you where I would personally put it and also to make this mixer screen cleaner when you come back to it. Now, channel 6, you would go in and add flaps. I've got two videos on the channel on how to set up flaps. One, the three-line method, and two is the curve method. Revert to those videos to check those out because it's a little bit more in-depth and I go over a few things to look out for in that video and it'll give you a more in-depth understanding and you can decide which route you want to do, but that would be the next thing I would do would be add flaps. Let's say you've got on this plane also reverse thrust. Reverse thrust, I'm going to do the same thing and go to source and I'm going to make it SC. So we just toggle SC. Now SC works, and you've got the values you need. Just like we talked about earlier, if you need to invert a value, like with the gear, if you pull it up and that doesn't bring the gear up or you want it to work in the opposite orientation, just go to the output screen and invert that channel. Example, we were talking about the gear. Let's say the gear is not working the way we want the switch to activate. We click on channel 5. Click edit and we would just invert channel 5. Now the switch works in the opposite orientation and it will work the way you're wanting it to originally work. Last, we'll go to the outputs and the output screen is where I would label the channel. Channel 1, we're going to click edit and we're going to click the name. We're going to put A uh, L for aileron. Click the check mark. Now it says A I L. We're going to go back into the mixer screen and you'll notice that it says AIL on that screen. On the output screen, it says AIL. Same thing if we add something just like we did on the gear. Go to channel 5 where it says gear. Click the check mark. Now, when we go back into the mixer, gear will say on channel 5. We could have done it earlier when we were setting up the gear or for example channel 7 and clicked on the top line here where it says name. All that does is adds it to this second part. So when you add it to both parts it just puts it on there twice and I'm going to do that just so you can see it for visual reference. Now when we back up see how it says gear twice that's the reason why I didn't do it earlier. So now we've set up the airplane from start to finish. You found this video informative or learned something new? Go ahead and push like down below.
You want to see future TX16S tutorial? Subscribe to the channel while you're here. I appreciate you watching, and I'll see you on the next one.